In case you missed part one of the transmission removal and our tools list for the BAS4 clutch job, you can find the video linked above and in the description below. In part two, we will go over the installation and reassembly. All right, my good people. At this point, the transmission is out. We have it ratchet strapped to our transmission jack. You can choose to put it on a workbench and work on it that way. Um, it's pretty secure here. It's not gonna go anywhere for us. So we're gonna continue to operate out of the stand. One very important thing to note before we continue, the clutch module itself is pretty heavy. So depending on what kind of surface you're working on, when you do remove that, the nature of the transmission or what it's gonna wanna do is tilt back. So just make sure it's secured wherever it is that you're working on it. Before we can pull the clutch module out, we have to remove the driver's side axle flange out. So this is the flange end right here and that goes all the way across to the other side of the transmission. Um, there's a delicate seal over here on this side, which we'll show you a little bit closer once we get to that point that we're gonna be mindful of. Um, in order to get this out, it is held in by three T45s. Then we can remove this plate and pull this whole unit out. As we pull it out, we're gonna support the bar through the openings on the bottom of the transmission um, until it gets uh, through to this, or uh, until it makes its way through the seal. Once it's out of the seal, then we can just kind of pull it out. We're not gonna hurt anything. All we're looking for is to make sure that seal does not get damaged. So three T45s, we'll go ahead and zap those out and get that out. With those three T45s out, now this retaining plate is loose. We're gonna go ahead and pull this shaft out Sometimes you need to give these a little bit of encouragement to come out, so we'll use a small hammer. And there we go. Here is our shaft out. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the whole clutch module. This is all one piece. There is a tool that is included with the clutch kit. It's a clutch module removal tool. Basically, the way it works is it acts as a handle when you pull this out. You don't want to just yank it out and you can risk damaging the pilot bearing and the flywheel. So if you're reusing your flywheel, you want to make sure to not put any weird stress on that. We're going to install the tool through one of these clutch module holes. It comes with a 17 millimeter nut that goes on the back side. And I'm just using the opening where that cover lives. That's my workplace. We're going to use a 17 millimeter wrench just to snug up the nut. We're going to go ahead and pull this whole assembly out using this tool on the top half of things. And I'm gonna use my hands on the bottom half to help support some of the weight. Again, being mindful that the transmission doesn't fall. Ours is ratchet strapped, it's not gonna go anywhere. Something to note is that these do have a self-adjusting pressure plate. So if you were gonna reuse the pressure plate for some reason, you can preload this unit and reset these springs back if you compare them against the new pressure plate, you can see our springs are compressed. They're fully clocked backwards or uh, counterclockwise. As they wear out and self-adjust, the springs open up clockwise and so do the tabs. So you can technically lock these and reset that if you're just replacing the clutch disc as an example. But we're gonna go ahead and replace everything. And so with that, before you assemble your clutch module assembly here, like we have on the left of us, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do a couple things first. And that's gonna be, Prepping the surface on the flywheel, we're gonna go ahead and clean that up with some brake clean, make sure there's no grease or lubricants on there. We're gonna make sure the clutch disc goes in the right way, which we'll show you that as well. But most importantly, you're gonna to wanna to use a shop press to preload the clutch so that when you assemble everything, you reduce the chance of having any chatter. Um, most times people will just go ahead and take the new pressure plate bolts, tighten them slowly in a star pattern, and then give them the final torque. Uh, Audi recommends that you preload these units, whether you're taking them apart or assembling a new clutch kit. So in this case, if we were gonna reuse some components in here, we will still preload the same way and then disassemble the hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to assemble the right way with the press tool. All right, my good people, a couple things to note on the flywheel assembly. Uh, when we get ready to go ahead and move it over to the press, there's one specific spot where you can support the flywheel from. And originally you would think, the bottom plate here that mounts to the uh, flywheel on the car, you could use as the bottom. But if you press and preload everything using this as your backing plate, you can distort it, causing you problems. So you don't wanna support it from here. You wanna get a bearing tool. Um, we're using a universal um, bearing removal tool, wheel bearing removal tool that has a bunch of different sizing uh, couplers that we're gonna use to support the bottom of the flywheel, uh, mainly around these bolts. 
That way we're not bending or distorting this plate. Other thing to notice is we're gonna go ahead and clean the surface here with some brake clean and a towel. You always wanna make sure that is spotless before you put your clutch disc on and assemble everything. So we're just gonna use some shop towel and some brake clean and give that a good wipe. Sometimes they have a little bit of a coating on them, especially depending on the type of packaging they come in. As you can see, this is a brand new flywheel. See how dirty that towel is just from the initial wipe. So you definitely wanna make sure the surface is clean. From there, you're gonna to wanna to take your clutch disc. They are labeled. So one side says gearbox side, at least for the South Bend clutch there is. And then the other side says nothing. Um, they're also physically different. So if yours are not labeled, be sure to pay attention to your old clutch before you take everything out and apart. But gearbox side means towards the gearbox, meaning this uh, flat side is gonna to go towards our flywheel. So we're just gonna go ahead and set that in there nicely. Then from there, we're gonna take our pressure plate. You have three alignment dowels on the flywheel that are gonna line up with the three uh, dowel holes on the pressure plate. You have one, two, and three. They're gonna be the lowest uh, part of the pressure plate, so they only go on one way. You can't really mix this up. And you'll know if you have it correctly, because one, it'll sit on pretty nicely, and two, all of your bolt holes for the pressure plates will be aligned. So, talking about alignment, we're gonna grab our alignment tool, which is also included with this kit. We're gonna go ahead and just feed that in. We're gonna use this one more time once we're at the press too. Things can move a little bit before we bolt everything down properly, but for now, it doesn't hurt to just feed that in there, make sure everything's happy and it sits in all the way. And go ahead and remove it for now. Now we're gonna grab our new pressure plate bolts and just start them by hand. The goal here is to have them all loosely started so that once everything's on the pressure plate, should anything move around at all, the bolts will already be started and they're not gonna jam up when you try to feed them in after the fact. These are six M10 triple square bolts. We're gonna to torque them down to 22 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees once we're done at the press. Now we have everything ready to go. Let's hop over to the press and we'll show you how to load it up, preload it and snug these bad boys down. All right, we have our press ready to go. We just have some miscellaneous blocks here as our bottom plates. The most important part though is gonna be how we support the flywheel and clutch assembly or the clutch module. Uh, my last and most important spacer is this is an H7 out of a or 7H out of a wheel bearing um, press kit. This is going to sit on the inside of the flywheel, up against the bolted area of it, and we have it up. We have it stacked up high enough so that the plate itself doesn't touch anything. There's no weight being put on the plate, so we don't distort anything. I have my alignment tool, clutch alignment tool, still in everything, so nothing moves around on us. That looks good there. Now our goal is just gonna to be to kind of center everything for the press itself, wherever it's happy. You can remove the clutch alignment tool. For the top half, we're using another spacer. This is, just happens to be 8A from that kit. The goal here is to have something in the middle that will keep this from sliding out, but not something that's too big where it will interfere with the fingers as they get compressed down. So this will give us plenty of slack. Then just another washer and now we're just gonna go ahead and lower the press until it touches the top of our tool here. All right, at this point, we just made contact. You're gonna to wanna to preload this about eight to nine millimeters. So you can use a caliper tool or mark your, your press itself and mark once you've traveled eight or nine millimeters. And then we can go ahead and torque down the pressure plate bolts. So what I've done here is I just marked my bottle jack with a Sharpie. I'm gonna go and start compressing this down. Once we hit about eight millimeters, or I think we have, I'm just gonna pull out the caliper and check along the way. Then we'll go ahead and torque down our M10s. With that, that's gonna be all the preload we need. Um, so again, if you were dismantling your current setup to reuse one of the components, you would do this step first before you undo the M10 bolts. That way you don't distort anything. Now at this point, I'm just gonna snug them down the rest of the way by hand. And then this next part is gonna be a two-person part. You're gonna need someone to hold everything while you torque down the M10s to 22 Newton meters plus the additional 90 degrees. So I'm gonna have Ethan, not only because he's helping me film today, but this is also his car. I'm gonna make him hold this and uh, we'll start to torque everything down. 
So just using a regular ratchet and the M10 bit, we're gonna snug down the hardware in a cross pattern, pretty much hoping to have the pressure plate touch the flywheel, and then we're gonna switch over to the torque wrench. As I tighten, Ethan's just gonna hold the clutch module, and then we're gonna trade places as we go around. I'm not snugging the hardware all the way down until it bottoms out. We're gonna do that evenly across the board, so we're just gonna do a little bit at each bolt in the start pattern, and eventually it will seat itself all the way down. So what I just went ahead and did is just tighten up the slack between the press tool and the top of our pressure plate. Since we're tightening everything down, it is now starting to sink down. So it's dancing around a little bit. We're not doing it to add more preload. We're just doing it to kind of hold everything in place for us. Now we're going to switch over to our torque wrench. Set to 22 Newton meters. Same thing, star pattern. As we hit the 22, I'm going to make a small mark on each bolt. That's going to help us do the final 90 at the end. Ethan's going to hold everything as we tighten these down until we hear a click. All right, at this point, all of our six pressure plate bolts are torqued down to 22 Newton meters. Now we're going to do an additional 90 degrees on all of them. Some torque wrenches have an angle mode, so if you have that, go ahead and use that now. But basically the goal here is to give each bolt an additional quarter turn. The reason I've marked all of them was one, to know which ones we already torqued down, and two, we can use the dots as a reference point so we know once we've done a quarter turn. Now at this point, the preload has been set. Obviously we snugged it down a bit more on the press just to keep it from dancing on us. You can go ahead and move over to a workbench if you want to finish the final torque there, or you just can continue and do it here on the bench or on the work press. We're gonna just bang it out on the work press while it's set up, and then we'll go from there. So with that, I'm gonna grab Ethan one more time, and we'll give these the final 90s. All right, my good people, with that, our pressure plate bolts are fully torqued down, torque to yield, 90 degrees. One last thing I wanted to point out while we have the camera in focus here is, should you be reusing your pressure plate and you wanna do readjust it, now would be the time with everything pressed down. Again, these two tabs, you would clock back in so that the spring compresses like this and you can reuse that pressure plate. Now with that, let's hop over to the transmission. We're gonna clean up the inside of our bell housing, replace the throw out bearing, all that good stuff and go from there. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the old throw out bearing along with the clutch fork. These are typically reusable. Um, the later cars did have an upgraded part number which is what's linked in the description below. This car already happens to have one. Um, we have the new part, it's shiny and new, we're going to replace it anyways, but they don't typically go bad. There's a small metal clip in here, a retaining clip that holds this in place. Just push back on it and pull this assembly forward. Like that, until it pops out, and you can push the clip back on the other side. And this unit will come out as one. You can see this throwout bearing is pretty wasted. Starting to get a little noisy. Um, usually the face of these uh, look a little bit different. So you can see the old one versus the new one. The new one's in much better shape. No clutch debris all over it. These just clip into the clutch fork. They have two small plastic clips that hold them in place. Some cars are different. They just kind of slide in, but these on these cars clip in. So. We'll go ahead and leave that old one to the side. We have our new one right here. It's got two flat spots dedicated to that part of the throw bearing. Same thing on the back of it, two flat spots for those to clip into. So we'll go ahead and take our new throw bearing, line up the two flat spots, top and bottom, just clip it in. And just like that, our new clutch fork and throw bearing are ready for install. Moving back to the transmission, it's always good to ins inspect the shaft, look at this cover here, see if there's any odd wear on it. You want to clean everything up. Um, before even wiping anything down, I can tell that this guy tube on the transmission has a ton of wear on it. So we're going to do the right thing and remove it, check the seal, make sure it's not leaking, and replace it with a fresh new guide tube. That way the throw bearing has something nice to ride on. That is held in by a couple Torx bolts in there, so let's grab that bit. We'll pull that out, but first, let's give everything an initial wipe down. That way we don't contaminate anything behind the cover. You can use a engine degreaser, brake clean, um, some APC. The main goal here is to not get any chemicals down this opening where the axle shaft goes through. You can use a small piece of painter's tape 
and block it off. You also don't want to remove any of the grease that's on that seal. If you do, just be sure to regrease it. So we're just going to be very gentle. We're going to spray onto our towel. This isn't terrible in here. We're going to give everything a wipe and then we'll work on replacing that guide tube. All right, my good people, at this point, our bell housing in here is pretty cleaned up, our transmission. We're gonna go ahead and remove the guide tube sleeve. It's held in by two T30s. We're gonna be reusing these bolts. We're just gonna clean them up and apply some blue thread locker to them when we reinstall them. And there we can pull the guide tube off. All right, so just to compare, here's the old guide tube. Here's the new one. Now, obviously it's natural to see some sort of markings on the guide tube, especially after 120,000 miles, but because of how bad this clutch failed and how nasty everything got, um, it has some pretty significant wear all the way around from the old throw bearing. We're gonna go ahead and replace it. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is take advantage of having it off and looking at the seal by the input shaft and looking at ours, it's in really good shape. There is no leaks, that's usually what you want to see. So we're gonna go ahead and just give that a gentle wipe and then we'll get the new guide tube on and then we'll install our T30s once more. We're simply gonna slide that over, line it up like so. All right, at this point with the guide tube on, I went ahead and just wire wheeled the old hardware to get the old sealant off of them. We're gonna apply a small amount of blue thread locker Loctite to them. We have these sticks available on fcpo.com. I personally like them a little bit more than the liquid, just a little bit less messy. Make sure your guide tube seated all the way in the transmission. It shouldn't have any play on it. We're just gonna snug these up by hand. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque these two T30s down to eight Newton meters. All right, now with our guide tube torqued down, we're gonna go ahead and just apply a very small amount of liquid moly ceramic paste to the splines. We're not gonna apply any to the guide tube. It's just simply to help the splines from being too, too dry when we install the clutch module. Also gonna apply a little bit of paste to the pivot pin here where the clutch fork meets the pivot pin. We're also gonna put some on the clutch fork as well, but just a small amount will do. Another thing to note is you wanna apply some on the back of the clutch fork as well. It does not hurt to have some where the throw bearing kind of sits on those two notches that we had before. Right now it's just up to the side. Now we can put it back where it goes. I'm gonna put a little mount here where the dowel on the slave is gonna to touch. And now the goal is to feed this back in and making sure that we get our clip on the clutch fork once more. And there we go, the pin, or the, the pin around the pivot is around the outside of the clutch fork and on the inside, everything looks good. It moves as it should. At this point, we have a clean transmission. We have all components in here ready to go. Um, we've cleaned out the opening for the slave. We're gonna go ahead and prepare our clutch module for install. And by that, I mean, we're gonna grab that same tool we're gonna use that to help install everything so we don't risk damaging the pilot bearing in the flywheel. So over on the table, we have our clutch module ready to rock and roll. Clutch alignment tool is still in it. We're gonna go ahead and remove that now. And now we're gonna gently, super gently, go ahead and stand this up on its side. And we're gonna grab our module tool. All right, that is in. We may need to pull it forward a bit when we install the shaft, just so it can clear the inside here, which we can do as we get that in. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to feed that through. You wanna clean out the threads on the end over here of the transmission as there was originally some blue thread locker on there. We just used a thread chaser tool to clean them out. A little bit of brake clean, they are open on the other end. Should be good to go. So with that, we can take our shaft. If there's any debris anywhere on it, go ahead and wipe that off. So just like we removed it, we're gonna feed it through, supporting the shaft from in between here, uh, super gently. Goal is not to damage the seal on the other end. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this forward a hair because I know it's gonna be 
in the way. There we go. And looking through, we have a straight shot. So that's exactly what we want to see. That looks good. You can see we got engagement. Other side is spinning. Our seal is all the way in here. So that's good stuff. Now with our shaft all the way in, if you'd like at this point, you can give it a baby love tap with a rubber mallet just to make sure it's fully seated in. But that's not going anywhere. All right, with our hardware cleaned up, we have our plate, how it's gonna go. The uh, built-in nuts are gonna sit towards the top of the transmission. That's what bolts the, uh, or that's what holds the shields. It was such a pain in the butt to get off earlier. We have our T45s all cleaned up. A little bit of thread locker on there. Again, we're using the blue stuff. With all three T45 snugged up, we're gonna torque them down to 24 Newton meters. Now we have the transmission ready to rock and roll. We're gonna go ahead and hop underneath the car and swap out the pilot bearing. We wanna make sure we take care of this before we install everything once more. This is such a small, simple piece that can fail over time. So the last thing you wanna do is skip on this step and have to take everything apart. Underneath the Audi, we have 10 M12 triple squares to remove. I highly recommend you use an impact to zap these out. I'm gonna start at the top and work our way around. With that loose, we're gonna go ahead and pull it off. Don't worry, this only goes on one way. It is keyed. You can see the dowel here on the other side. Make sure this uh, plate stays in here. You don't want it to fall out, so just try to avoid touching it at all cost. That all looks good there. We're gonna head over to the workbench and show you how to replace this pilot bearing. All right, now that we have this off, we're gonna go ahead and work on removing the old pilot bearing. Here is our new one. This one lives inside of here like so. So we're gonna go ahead and set a socket down below that is gonna brace the back of this wheel. This is a 36 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and center that right over. We have an 18 millimeter socket that we're gonna use to push through. And with a large hammer, we're just gonna hammer it through. And just like that, here is our old pilot bearing. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip this around. Still using that 36 millimeter socket. We're gonna take our new pilot bearing and feed it in, obviously opening down. It's gonna sink in nicely just like that. And then we're gonna get a socket that fits the outer diameter of this bearing a bit more, better than the small 18 that we were just using. For this, I'm gonna use a 20 millimeter socket that's gonna sit nicely on the outer diameter of the bearing. And same thing, we're just gonna go ahead and tap it in. I'm gonna ditch the 36 mil. I think we'll be okay just using the table here. We have a little bit more to go. You can hear how the sound changes when it bottoms out. You can also see it bottom out on the inside. Good to rock and roll. So with that, we have our 10 new bolts ready to rock. Let's head back up underneath the S4 and get those started. All right, my good people, back under the S4, our reluctor ring is still in place. We have our wheel here ready to rock and roll. Again, the back side has a little locator for the dowel here. Make sure you line those up. It's only gonna go on one way. We're gonna go ahead and start our new hardware. These are only gonna go so much by hand um, just due to the Loctite on them. All right, now we have all 10 hands started. I'm gonna use two of the old uh, clutch module bolts as my counter holds. So I can use a pry bar to counter hold the hardware as we torque it all down. We're gonna snug them down in a crisscross pattern. All right, now we have all 10 of these snug down. Same thing in a crisscross pattern. We're gonna torque them down to 60 Newton meters. After we torque down each one to 60, as we do them, we're gonna mark them with a small paint pen so that we know uh, what to use for a reference when we do the additional 90 at the end. So let's go ahead and set our torque wrench and torque these all down to 60 Newton meters. I'm using two of the old uh, clutch module bolts as my counter hold. So I can do something like that so that everything doesn't spin on me when we torque it down. Make sure your M12 is in all the way. You don't want to strip these bolts out. 
All right. With that, all 10 of these are marked and torqued down to 60 Newton meters. Now we're going to give all of them an additional 90 degrees or a quarter turn. If you have an angle mode on your torque wrench, now would be the time to use it. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to have Ethan hold the counter hold for me so I can just zap through these 90 degrees. And then once we're done with that, my good people, we can bring the transmission over and get ready to pop it back in. Alrighty, my good people, these are all torqued up. We're gonna take these old bolts out and now we can go ahead and get ready to bring the transmission over. For those of you with an eagle eye, you'll notice that I tucked the harnesses up here off in the respective sides. I have the one for the uh, gear indicator going over to the right. I'm just taking it off the exhaust here. We can unlatch that later. And same thing for the harness going on the left. Just hanging it off the hanger on the cat on that side. So just so we have some room and we're not fighting everything. And if you remember when this was coming down, we snagged up on these little tabs off each side of the subframe. These are for the shields. Two 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna zap them out now just so that they're not in our way when we go to push everything back in. So two tens, I'm gonna zap these brackets out and uh, we'll get the transmission over here and start feeding it in. At this point, it's time to raise the transmission back into the car. We're going to use a combination of the transmission jack and a screw jack to level it uh, once we get closer to getting the input shaft to the pilot bearing. So for now, we're just going to kind of get it up there. I'm going to have Ethan help me up front to make sure we don't hit the steering shaft, just like we were being cautious of on the way down. And then once everything starts lining up, we'll push it forward, level it out, and we'll get a couple pieces of hardware started. We have the transmission made it up to the engine nicely. For now, we're gonna start the bottom three bolts. Then we're gonna to move to the front starter and the bolt right by the electronic steering rack. Just that everything's nice and sandwiched and we can lower the trans once more to do the top. So, first three bell housing bolts going off of our diagram that we made out of a pizza box. We're just gonna start these in by hand. These are the 16 millimeter 12 point bolts. The smaller, if you will. All right, with these three gently snug up, we're gonna head over to the front half over here by the passenger side uh, axle flange, and we're gonna go ahead and bolt the starter bolt and the lower bell housing bolt that come in through the front. All right, we have one more 16 millimeter 12 point coming in via the front, uh, right above the steering gear, electronic steering rack. All right, same thing, just gently snug. Now we're gonna do the lower starter bolt, which also comes in via the front. This is a 16 millimeter six point. It's the only six point in this whole mosh posh that we got going on over here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that one in next. This one's gonna require a bit of finagling from the starter. The starter has moved obviously since the transmission came out. You may need to press the starter forward back up against the transmission bell housing so you can tighten down that bolt. Just use a long screwdriver or pry bar to gently walk the starter back up against the transmission bell housing. It should go in very easily. Started by hand, of course. You never want to do these with a tool, especially an electric tool right off the rip. All right, with this one we're gonna leave barely snug in case we need to adjust the starter, um, the position of it, once we do the bolts on the back side of everything. Now we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the next two bell housing bolts, which are right above the left hand uh, axle flange. I have these labeled based on how I pulled them out of the vehicle earlier. Obviously, we're using the new hardware. Now we're going to place our bracket in place. You'll see there's a small tab on it on the bottom that keys into the transmission. Helps keep everything happy. Now the bolts can go in. Now we have all of those snugged up. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this transmission jack and we're going to use the screw jack on the end just to help lower and raise everything so that we can access the top of the bell housing bolts next. All right, gang, we're gonna start by installing the top two bell housing bolts. We have a ton of extensions, at least three foot's worth, um, where they swivel. I have a small piece of electrical tape just going around half the head of the bolt so we don't lose the bolt while we're feeding this up through the tunnel. I recommend you do that whenever you have any hardware that you can't reach. Don't put too much tape, otherwise the socket will remain with everything else and then you won't be able to get it out. So we just have it half taped on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and feed the top two bolts. Same deal, my good people. We're gonna go for the bolt on the left-hand side. These are the top two very bolts once more. 
All right, my good people, now we're going to go for the two bolts. We have the upper starter bolt as well as the one to the left of it. Uh, one more bell housing bolt, leaving us a total of two left. All right, for this last starter bolt, we're coming in from the right side of the wheel well, kind of blindly just going to feed this bolt up here and see if we can get it to start by hand. All right, my good people, right now what we're doing is we're feeding the long group of extensions without the socket via the top of the transmission on the right half of the tunnel. We feed the extension all the way through underneath the cat without the socket and we join it at the socket once uh, we clear the cat. So what I'm saying is extension goes through without a socket and it meets the socket at the bolt already on the other side of the cat. That way we can uh, tighten this bolt. You cannot get the socket through uh, underneath the cat between the transmission and the cat with everything together. So you have to join them on the other side of the catalytic converter. So all four of these 18 millimeter 12 point bell housing bolts up top, including the starter one, are gonna be torqued to 30 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Now you and I both know that there's no way to get an accurate torque reading with the number of extensions and angles that we have going on here. So if you have an option to torque it, 30 Newton meters plus 90 degrees, we're just gonna go ahead and snug them up as best as possible. It's not a lot of torque, so I'm not worried about them coming loose. And I don't wanna over torque them and snap them as they are um, delicate aluminum bolts. All right, these top two 18 millimeter 12 points are gonna be torqued down to 30 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees, just like the top bell housing bolts. And then we have one more down below it. Same deal, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down to 30, then an additional 90. All right. Now with that, we can do the bottom bolts. These lower three bell housing bolts get torqued to 15 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees. And these are 16 millimeter 12 points. For the forward facing 16 millimeter 12 point, there's no way to get a real good um, torque wrench on there. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just use the 16 millimeter 12 point wrench to snug it down. Again, it's 15 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. It's not a whole lot. And I would argue we are already there. So we're gonna call that one good. And the same issue arises for the starter bolt. That's the 16 millimeter six point. That one's torqued down to 65 Newton meters. Um, same deal with the angle that we're gonna be having using an extension with a swivel. Um, it's not gonna give us an accurate torque reading. So uh, I would suggest just snugging it down as best as possible by hand. You don't need to go very tight. Now we have all our bell housing bolts secured. Time to head back up top of the transmission. We have a couple things to plug in, a couple harnesses to run, and a gear selector indicator sensor to plug in, as well as our shifter rod. So let's go ahead and do that now. Back up top of the transmission, we're gonna work on plugging in our sensor. This is the uh, gear indicator sensor. We're gonna go ahead and just feed that back into the plug over here on the right side of the transmission. A slight little pull, once it feels good. Slip the heat shield back over it. There's a couple alligator clips on the line. Make sure you just clip those back uh, onto the ridges on the transmission that hold the cable in place so it doesn't dance around while you're driving. Okay, there we go. Goes on from the side. While we're here, we can also go ahead and reattach the heater block assembly back onto this metal tab that comes off the top of the transmission. It's just gonna slide on like that. Here's a better look at that unit. Once it's seated back on the metal tab on top of the transmission, you can see here by the flathead screwdriver, it only goes in one way and it clips in once it's fully seated. Next, we're gonna swing our stabilizer bar over. Again, we left that 13 millimeter bolt in it. We're just gonna slide that over to the left. This is gonna link up with the gear selector rod. I was going to sit something like that. That 13 millimeter bolt gets torqued down to 20 Newton meters. We're just going to go ahead and snug it down by hand with a ratcheting wrench. It's not a lot of torque. Again, it's not going to be moving. It's just a stabilizer bar. But if you have the way to, uh, way to torque it, 20 Newton meters is going to be your goal. All right, that's nice and snug. That can live there now. And next we're going to work on mating the Axle shafts with the transmission once more. Again, the trans is still lowered while we're doing all this. Uh, just gives us a better chance at getting to all the hardware easier. 
We did mark our flanges before. I like to put everything back together the way it came off as best as possible. That way everything works in harmony once more. So it's just gonna be a matter of pressing these two together like so while we feed in our new hardware. Again, this is also linked. We do recommend you replace it if you can. We're just gonna start the M10 triple squares by hand. And then once we have them all started by hand, we can work on snugging them up to a total of 70 Newton meters. Similar to the clutch and flywheel, we're gonna tighten them down in a star pattern. Now we're gonna go ahead and snug up the six triple square M10s. We're gonna snug them up in a crisscross pattern before we torque them down to 70 Newton meters. So now what I'm gonna do is using the brake rotor as my counter hold, I'm gonna shove a screwdriver in between the fins of the brake rotor and the brake caliper. That way it keeps everything from rotating. And we're just gonna go ahead and torque down the 70 Newton meters using a half inch extension with a M10 triple square bit on the end. Next on our laundry list of things to do is gonna to be to reinstall the heat shield that sits right above up. We have three six millimeter Allen hex bolts that need to go in here with the shield that are gonna be torqued down to 24 Newton meters. This is driver's side is arguably the easier shield to get on. The passenger side is a lot tighter, mainly the front bolt, um, which you may have seen earlier when we were struggling with it. I had to shrink my hands down a couple sizes to get the final one out. These get torqued to 24 Newton meter, these three six millimeter hexes. Um, because the torque value is so low and it's just holding the heat shield, we're just gonna snug them up with the electric ratchet. Now that the driver's side is fully bolted up, let's head over to the passenger side and repeat the same steps. So right now, my good people, what we're gonna try to do is install the heat shield first. This is the two-part heat shield on the passenger side, um, arguably the harder one to get to, mainly because of the front bolts being so buried. So we're gonna try to feed that in and then side the axle in, if possible. All right, my good people, at this point, we have just finished struggling with that front six millimeter shield bolt. Now, obviously our axle is still off to the side, so the shield is loose. It's just being held in by the front six millimeter bolt, um, which is tight enough. We're gonna go ahead and just force the shield up and that's gonna allow us to slide the axle shaft back over into the transmission. We're gonna line up our paint marks just like we did on the other side. And at this point, it's up to you if you want to bolt the drive shaft up first and then swing the shield back down and install the last two six millimeter bolts. Or if you wanna swing the shield down first and then bolts up the drive shaft. It truly does not matter. Um, so you can do either or. So for now, all I know is that our drive shaft is in place. It's happy. The shield is gonna come back down. We're gonna make sure that both ends are made it up. And we're gonna go ahead and bolt up the shield and then we'll bolt up the transmission side of the flange to the drive shaft. So I'm gonna feed our two six millimeters back in. Now we have the heat shield situated. We're gonna go ahead and hand start the six M10 triple square bolts. All right, with all six bolts in hand started, we're gonna snug them up with the electric ratchet just so that they're all flush. And we're gonna snug them up in a crisscross pattern. All right, now with all six snugged up evenly, we're gonna go across the board again, torque them down to 70 Newton meters using our half inch drive extension and torque wrench and we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver in between the caliper and the rotor just to act as a counter hold so that it doesn't spin on us. Now we have a 13 up here that holds this shorter um, shifter rod in place. The bolt stayed with the rod, so we're gonna go ahead and get it started by hand. These get snugged down to 20 Newton meters. We're just gonna go ahead and do our best to just snug it up gently. It's not a lot of torque, so we don't have to worry about too much with this one. Now that we have that situated, we can go ahead and raise the transmission back up. All right, back up top of the transmission on the left-hand side this time, we're gonna work on reconnecting our shifter linkage to the side of the transmission, as well as connecting it to the stabilizer bar at the top. Once we have that in place, these are splined to only go one way, so you don't have to worry about um, hooking this up incorrectly. It's just a matter of getting it to bite in the same spot that it came off of. Feels pretty good, feels like we have the spline lined up. We're gonna take our 13 millimeter nut and get it hand started. And we're gonna use our 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench 
just to gently snug it up, make sure it doesn't feel like it's binding up or anything like that. And as long as it goes in easily, then we know the splines are lined up. They only go one way. This gets torqued down to 20 Newton meters. There we go. With that situated, we're gonna move now to securing the slave cylinder back into the transmission. We're gonna cut that zip tie off that we set up at the beginning. Now we're gonna go ahead and just gently feed this tip back in. There we go. Now we're gonna grab our triple square M10, get that started by hand. With that gently snugged up, we're gonna torque it down to 20 Newton meters. Beautiful. All right, now that our M10 triple square is torqued down, the slave's bolted up, we need to resecure the hard and soft line back to this tab on the side of the transmission. It's got a rubber grommet, just gonna gently pull that down. Following that up, we have the stabilizer bar that needs to be attached to the top of our um, gear selector rod. There's, you'll see there's a yellow bushing located on the top of the shifter linkage there, or the shifter arm. Once that bushing is through the stabilizer bar, you can slide the locking ring back over. That's gonna lock onto the bushing itself. All right, and that is secure. Beautiful. Now that we have that situated, let's raise up this transmission and bolt up the cross member back to the body of the car. Using the screw jack or floor jack if you're working on the ground at home, which I hope you are not, we're gonna go ahead and raise the transmission up until this transmission mount cross member joins the bottom of the car's body once more. I'm just gonna leave it a little loose. We're gonna grab our four M12 bolts and just start them by hand. Once we have them all started by hand, then we can go ahead and raise the transmission up a bit more to just fully seat the cross member against the body of the car. And for those of you wondering, we never did drop that right exhaust section. We just replaced the nuts while we had the transmission out. But I would almost argue that you can do this job without dropping both of those exhaust pipes. Okay, from there, we're gonna go ahead and just raise it the rest of the way. All right, it's nice and snug. We're gonna use the impact just to snug them up and then we're gonna to torque these four M12s to 70 Newton meters. All right, my good people, at this point, the transmission's level, it's nice and bolted up to the body of the car. We're gonna work on joining the clutch module to the engine side of things. We have our new clutch module bolts. Once more, these are going to be 16 millimeter 12 points. We have these lined up ready to go, which we made sure of when we were installing the transmission. We're just gonna get them started by hand. And then we're gonna stop there and we're just gonna rotate and get them all started by hand. So I'm gonna be using CTA 1412 to rotate the engine at the front of the crank. You wanna make sure you're always rotating clockwise. Okie dokie. This is gonna be the last one, number six. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and snug them down with the ratchet little by little. So I'm sorry, we're using a gear wrench, ratcheting wrench, 16 millimeter 12 point. And we're just gonna go ahead and flush these down so that they sit nice and flush against the back of the module plate. We're gonna stop there and I'm gonna go ahead and do this crisscross just to make sure that the whole thing is seating down evenly. Um, you could probably just go around and tighten them one by one, but I like the idea of doing everything in a cross pattern if possible, just to make sure that everything's seating up against the engine side of things evenly. All right, my good people, at this point, we're gonna start torquing these down to 60 Newton meter. I'm gonna have Ethan counter hold for me on the other side while I tighten down on this. We're just gonna go around in a circle for this one. All right, now we have all six of those torqued down. We can go ahead and reinstall our cover plate. And for that, it simply just pops back into place. We're gonna go ahead and reconnect our engine crank sensor, as well as our electronic steering rack. All that stuff can come back this way. All right, we have all our wiring over here. We pulled it back over from where it was hiding. We're gonna go ahead and put these alligator clips back in. You could argue this first clip, uh, sensor could have stayed on. No real need to unplug it. And we got our next steering rack one. Don't forget to lock the tab. Crank position sensor. Same thing, this one has a locking tab on the other side. 
Make sure you push that in once you push it all the way in here. And then lock it in. These two can hang on to each other once more right there. And we have the large power steering plug. There we go. Lock that in. Now we're going to go ahead and pull our steering shaft down and reattach it to the rack once more. So when it goes on one way, my good people, we did mark them at the beginning just for peace of mind, but it truly goes in one way. Make sure the shaft is seated all the way through. You're going to want to grab your new M10 bolt. It is a torque to yield. We're going to go ahead and torque this bad boy down to 30 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees. So first we're going to just snug up the M10. And now we can torque it to 30 plus an additional 90. 90 degree turn. And there we go. All right, my good people, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and install the drive shaft. Uh, we have the new Ortiker clamp preloaded onto the end of the drive shaft already, so it's ready to rock and roll. We're gonna slip the front end first, give it a good push, make sure it's all the way in. Then we'll feed the CV joint back here, and then we'll go ahead and get our center support bearing lined up and get that all installed. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna go ahead and feed the front end. Again, Oedeker clamp already situated on the end of the drive shaft. Make sure our splines are lining up. All right, now that we have it most of the way in, we're going to need to open up this circlip inside the boot once more. Now we should be able to push it in the rest of the way. There we go. Circlip is out. Boot is in our face. This clamp is on there. We're going to go ahead and situate that clamp once we get the rest of the drive shaft installed. Now we're going to move to the rear. All right, at the rear, we're going to push on the drive shaft forward towards the transmission so we can get our CV joint in all the way. All right. We have our screw jack here, which we're going to raise up now to kind of help hold everything. All right, now that you have your drive shaft lined up and kind of fit in up against the differential, we're gonna go ahead and install our hardware. We're gonna use the old markings to see where the uh, bolts with the spacers are gonna go. I'm just gonna go ahead and reference these old spots and go ahead and start them all by hand. Once we have all of these just seated in a little bit, we're gonna snug them up in a crisscross pattern and then we're gonna torque these M10s to 30 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees. At this point, all six are torqued down to 30 Newton meters. Now we're just going to go around and give each one an additional 90 degrees, still having Nate and Ethan holding the back wheels. And then we can call this end of the drive shaft done. Now we have all of those situated. We're going to hop over to the center. We're going to tackle the two 13 millimeter center support bolts. These both get torqued down to 20 Newton meters. I'm going to do my best to just use the old marking on the bracket here where the bolts used to live, just to kind of keep it lined up the same way it came off. And now that we have that situated, now is the best time to install the heat shield that sits over that. So let's go ahead and grab that now. All right, we have two plastic 10 millimeter nuts that are captured on this under paneling, which are gonna just pull down when we get to that. And we have two more studs up front for the 10 millimeter washers that hold the shield in place. So, and we're just gonna snug all these down with the electric ratchet. You don't need to go overkill. They're both A, very thin metal, and B, two plastic nuts. You want to make sure the shield isn't bent in any weird way where it's going to contact the drive shaft and make any noise while you're driving. Give it a couple spins if you're unsure. Otherwise, you should be good to go. Now, let's move over to the front of the drive shaft. We'll, we'll secure the Oedeker clamp down there and continue on. All right, now we're going to go ahead and secure this Oedeker clamp using our Oedeker style 
pliers here. We're gonna grab the head of the clamp. And bam, that is a beautiful sight. Now with that, we're gonna go ahead and get the other exhaust pipe down here on the left-hand side. We're gonna get our new hardware. We're gonna have to nut and bolt the one stud that broke. These studs are not available individually for this pipe. You have to buy the whole thing from Audi. Um, we tried sourcing an alternate part number from either BMW or Porsche that would work. Fortunately, nothing that we could find, so nut and bolt is gonna be the best uh, solution for that, but that's no problem. That's how most of these manifolds are held in anyway. So we'll get a screw jack in here, we'll prop both of these up, and we'll get these center sections fully set up. Now we're gonna go ahead and feed our mid pipe back in. We have our new gasket situated. I have a screw jack on the back end set up just to help support the butt, the butt section of that. And we'll make sure our studs go through. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the rear section of the exhaust and join that with the center section. Uh, I'm gonna slip the new clamps on the center section first and just leave them loose all the way forward. And then with the help of Ethan or a second friend at home or a set of jack stands or floor jack, depending on how you're working, we're just gonna get those two together and try to snug them up and support them with the screw jack so we can get all our hardware on. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. We have a little bit of copper RTV in the clamps just to help seal the exhaust. Now we're gonna feed it in, line up everything and support it with some screw jacks. Before we worry too much about these clamps, we're gonna work on securing the hangers for the rest of the rear section of the exhaust. That's gonna make sure that everything's in line properly. And then we can worry about fiddling with the center section. So for that, we're gonna get our hardware ready. All right, now we're just gonna work on raising up the exhaust so that we can secure our hangers. We're gonna work from the rear forward, and then we'll work on joining up our two clamps in the middle. I was gonna go ahead and get our 13 millimeter nut started. And then we're just gonna zap it in with the electric ratchet. Again, all these fasteners are 24 millimeters, or 24 newton meters if you wanna torque them down. 13 millimeter nut. All right, now we're gonna move over to the left muffler and zap this 13 in as well. Beautiful. Now let's move over to the middle of this rear section. All right, now let's move to the center clamps and secure those. So as I mentioned before, I had put a bit of RTV, uh, copper RTV in there, also available on the site, just to help seal. Sometimes you get leaks if you don't use anything. We're gonna go ahead and match up the clamps to the old marks that were on these pipes, something like that. Also gonna make sure to join them together and we're gonna zap them tight. We have four 13 millimeter nuts, 24 newton meters. Me and Ethan are gonna join them together and then we're gonna zap them in. All right, before we finalize up on this exhaust work, we have two more exhaust related components to tackle, which are the rubber hangers up front that swing down and bite onto the transmission. So let's go ahead and put those in so we can start installing our shields. All right, my good people, now on the driver's side, we're gonna go ahead and reattach our hanger here for the left side of the test pipes. We have a 13 millimeter bolt up top and a 13 millimeter bolt down below. We're gonna go ahead and snug those up. it be about 24 Newton meters for this one. For this one, we also have a 13 millimeter nut on the back that we have to counter hold. So I might just go ahead and counter hold on the outside and use my tiny ratcheting 13 millimeter wrench on the inside to get the job done. All right, with that situated, we're gonna go ahead and install our shield which sits on the left-hand side here. It's held in by two 10 millimeter bolts and one 13 millimeter bolt. And we also cannot forget the tabs that we removed when the transmission was coming down, just to have better access and be able to clear the transmission as it came down. These are just two 10 millimeter bolts. We had one on each side and our shield is simply gonna slide in. You wanna make sure that those squares that lock in the X brace at the bottom are still there. We have 113. Again, this was the sneaky one that lives up top here. This one's located right behind these lines for the electric power steering. So I'm gonna line up that 13 millimeter bolt. 10 mil bolt behind the 
driver's side axle, 10 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and zap that in. Now we have this lower tab here, which we removed earlier. We're gonna start the bottom 10 loosely. These are the ones we pulled off when we were dropping the transmission. Now we can go ahead and secure it onto the subframe, 10 millimeter. We'll do the same thing onto the shield. Beautiful. With that, this left shield is installed. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the passenger side, doing the exhaust hanger first and then the shield, and then we'll pick it back up with the rest of the belly pan shields and the X-brace. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our X-brace down here. We have all new hardware. These are torque to yield bolts. Of course, these are included in the original description below. These will all be torqued down to 90 newton meters plus 135 degrees. Now we have this X brace situated. If we follow straight back, we have one more brace that goes over the uh, center section of our exhaust. That's held in by four 16 millimeter bolts. We're gonna torque these down to 55 Newton meters. All right, my good people, the felt skid plate is gonna go back on. If you haven't already, be sure to secure your lines back to the top of the X brace here. Usually a couple, um, rubber expanding rivets that go into the frame. If your car is equipped with hydraulic steering, make sure you bolt your hydraulic lines back to the X-brace. I believe it's one 10 millimeter nut that holds it into place, but don't quote me on that. We don't have that here. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and install our felt skid plate. It's held on by a couple torques and some big plastic rivets. We're gonna install the big plastic rivets now. We have one on each end. I go into our X-brace. We have three T25s that hold the rest of this plate in place. Now that we have that situated, we can install the forward skid plate, which if you remember on ours is a mosh posh of uh, random hardware. So let's grab that now and install that next. We're gonna go ahead and feed our shield in, front half first. All right, now that our undergarments are all situated, we're gonna hop into each wheel well and reinstall the small piece of wheel liner that covers the top half of the axles, our wheels, and then we'll go from there. And we have axle shields, if you wanna call them that, that go uh, on the outside here, part of the fender liner. They're held in by two 10 millimeter plastic nuts. Just make sure you get them situated properly. They are only for one side. We'll grab our two plastic 10 millimeter nuts, and these are just gonna be snug on. Um, they are plastic, they don't need to be over torqued. All right, and while I have you here, we're gonna install our wheel. We have our wheel that's held in by five 17 millimeter lug bolts. We're just gonna get them started by hand and snug up first. Once we lower the car on the ground, we will give them the final torque. We're just gonna go ahead and snug these up and then we're gonna hop over to the driver's side and do the same steps. Beautiful, now let's do the shield and wheel on the other side. Always be sure to tighten your wheels in a star pattern. Do the passenger side, same deal. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reattach our battery, starting with the positive terminal first. Lift that cover off, slide that bad boy on. We have a 10 millimeter nut. We're just gonna snug these up. These are pinch nuts. They don't need to be extremely tight. You can strip these very easily. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down the negative terminal, same 10 millimeter nut. Nice and gentle, we'll fold this back over. Now with that, we can install our cover for all our spare tire accessories. Now our spare wheel can go back in. And now we can do our lock. Don't forget to undo this little flap. 
and that's gonna be good there. That is gonna conclude this DIY for today. At this point, depending on the clutch you installed, you're gonna to wanna to be sure to follow the break-in period uh, as far as mileage goes. For this stage two South Bend clutch, South Bend recommends 500 miles of city driving, not highway driving. Make sure you don't do any pulls off the rip or anything like that. You wanna make sure the clutch beds in properly, especially if you replaced all the components. Otherwise, this DIY is gonna be applicable to your B8s and B8s and a half, so regardless of stage one, stage two, or stage three clutch kits that you're gonna be installing. On the B8s, most of those cars, I believe, have hydraulic steering, so you're gonna have some hydraulic lines to deal with instead of the electrical connectors like we did on our electronic rack. Otherwise, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.